In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to create some leather. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The Voronoi node generates a noise which has a cellular appearance and is great to use for organic looking textures. Controls the scale of the Voronoi noise. The distortion intensity lets you adjust the warping effect. Use style to switch between different styles from filled random color shapes over gradients to solid lines. The Voronoi Fractal node generates a fractal 3D Voronoi noise which is mapped to a 2D image. It has a lot more detail variation than the regular Voronoi. Distortion Scale Multiplier defines the scale of the deforming pattern which is used for the warp effect. Roughness controls the balance between high and low details in the fractal pattern. The Triangle Grid node generates a grayscale triangulated 2D pattern. Random Position Multiplier tweaks the intensity of the main warp effect. Adjusts the amount of displacement applied to each vertex using the values from the vector map input. Let's build this basic ladder setup together with the metallic roughness preset. You can then use it as base for even more complex ladder materials. First, we delete the uniform color nodes for the roughness, height, and AO because we'll use our height map details here. Let's choose a nice brownish color and connect it to a blend node's background. As foreground, we use a gradient map node to bring in structure details later on. We further add a histogram range node for more roughness control, connect it to the roughness output and add an invert node to invert the channel. Then we add an HPAO node with a height scale of 0.002. You can also use the RTAO for ray traced ambient occlusion. Let's finish this base material setup with a dot node and connect it to all the inputs. For this quick tip example we start with the Voronoi node and push the scale to 128 for a smaller pattern. We connect it to the dot node. To get the bit of deformation in, we raise the distortion intensity to 0.25. Then we increase the rounded curve to 0.7 and choose F1 divided by F2 as style for a nice rounded base pattern. To get the more subtle pattern with softer transitions, we connect it to a levels node. For more controls over the values, we click on the values button and lower the level in mid slider to 0.25. Let's even blur it slightly with a blur HQ grayscale node and a value of 0.15. Now we continue with the Voronoi fractal node for smaller details. For a smaller pattern, let's increase the scale to 20. Then we push first the distortion scale multiplier to 40 and bring in some small distortion by increasing the distortion intensity slightly. Further, we adjust the roughness to 0.85 for some nice detail variation. Let's connect the Blur HQ grayscale to a blend node and use the Voronoi fractal as foreground. We now switch to Min Darken and lower the opacity to 0.4 to blend the details in. Finally, we use an Auto Levels node to get the full 0 to 1 range. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can use it as base ladder. Save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. Let's dive into some more variation of this tip. For more control over the smaller details I use multi-directional warp nodes with scaled clouds 2 as input. I blended one with max mode and one with min mode together and used the divide blending mode. This really helped me to get sharper more plateau looking shapes but also have nice details. A triangle grid grayscale node is also nice as base pattern. Here you can really experiment with different parameters and further use a vector map displacement input to deform it for variation. This really introduces a nice flow to the pattern. Random position multiplier is great to randomize the position of the triangles. It really depends on the ladder structure you want to achieve and if it should be more organized or have more randomness. I multiplied a triangle grid pattern with solid colors over one with some gradients to get random height for it. A combination of blur HQ and levels node helps me to control the height roundness and also provides me 
with good control over how sharp the transition should be. For the smaller deformations, I use the warp node. The clouds 2 in combination with a blur HQ grayscale node really helps to control the warp scale. Here you can further experiment with different inputs for sharper or smoother deformations. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching, and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.